Right guys, so today's elevator parts project is this big old Westinghouse indicator. Now this came out of the downtown Commons parking garage in Sacramento, California. And this big old beast was given to me by none other than Justin himself. So Justin, thank you for this pretty epic indicator. I am looking forward to working on this thing. So I actually have two of these right now, one of which will be eventually going to the elevator museum. There's also the call button over there. But today we're mainly focused on this indicator right here and seeing what we can do with it. So just the indicator is fairly straightforward. Obviously we've got the floor numbers here. We have some arrows here which would indicate the movement of the car. And then the big arrows indicate up or down for the current call. We have these two little kind of cases for the big lamps for the arrows. And we've got all the individual little bulbs here. And then of course we've got our favorite bell. which is the Westinghouse dinner bell. So I've got a few ideas for what we can do with this project. And the main one is hooking it up to an Arduino to make it functional. And that's going to require a little bit of work, but hopefully not too bad of work. So what we're mainly gonna focus on first are these arrows here, and then we'll figure out what we wanna do with these. So before we get started with any of the wiring or even thinking about what we wanna do with this thing, let's clean it up a bit. I mean, look at how disgusting this is and the front could use a little bit of work as well now conveniently these arrows if we give them a little pull they're a little broken but they come right off so that'll make it easy for cleaning the arrows could use a little bit of cleaning themselves but i'll have to take the actual metal off the guts which is pretty simple to do just take that off and then we can work on the actual guts individually before hooking it back onto the plate so let's uh, let's clean this boy up a little bit and make it not so disgusting. Right, now that we've cleaned up the panel a little bit, this looks a lot nicer, and I've got some of the dust off here. You see here I've removed all of the little caps here, and these just kind of slide on top to direct the light only onto the said number. So we've got all those removed off to the side. We're exposing all of the little lamps. Now originally we had the little incandescent bulbs, but since we're going to run this off an Arduino, I'm gonna switch it to LED. I've got a bunch of these little LED bulbs here, which are six volt. They should run on five. They'll be a little bit dimmer, but not too bad. I've got a ton of these guys here, a whole bit of them actually. We've also got a couple greens and reds. So what I was thinking, we have for the up and down, red and green, and for all the floors, we have white. Now I always said I'd rather see incandescent bulbs in this thing, but just seeing as how we're gonna run this, the LED is going to be the way to go. So the plan for the rest of this, for the wiring at least, get all of our bulbs in, figure out how this is all going to be wired up, and then hook it to the Arduino. Another thing we need to consider, these end caps. These have some very, very large bulbs in them, and I was thinking we could maybe switch it out. I haven't really decided what I want to do with this yet. I mainly focus on the middle for now, and then we'll figure out what we want to do with the big lights on the end. So we'll, we'll worry about that when the time comes. Let's go ahead and get started with the basic wiring of these lamps.
I've made these little cap things and these are designed to fit inside of the lamp holders that are in here. Now, we'll have to see if these are big enough or not. <laughs> We're gonna put an LED in there and try it out and hope for the best. The LED will totally light up in there. It's, I'm just wondering if, well obviously an LED is going to be big enough to light up an entire arrow. We'll see, we'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. Let's uh, give it a go. Right, so the coating is complete and it was actually more of a pain to do than I thought. There was a lot of just little tiny little errors that uh, kept arising. But after spending maybe you know an hour and a half, two hours on tweaking the code, we're finally set with a working indicator. So when you, as you saw earlier, when you plug it in and it turns on, so right now it's being run off the computer, but when you turn it on, You'll see the lights come on, the two arrows, and then it just starts up. And it always starts on the first floor. So this indicator uses this remote, which is the same remote that's used on this indicator. And it's pretty straightforward what to do. Pretty much just input a floor. So if we want to go to floor six, we press six. And you'll see that this arrow comes on. Now obviously these are your floors. These arrows indicate the direction of the car. So if the car is moving up or the car is moving down, these come on. And then the big arrows come on when the car arrives at your floor and it's telling you the direction that the car is going. So in this case, when it reaches floor six, the down arrow is gonna go on because we're at the top floor and we need to go down and we can't go up anymore. Now we're gonna send it back to one. So just like before, we're gonna have the down arrow go on because we're going down now. And the car, or in this case, the lights are gonna move down to the first floor. And likewise, when we get to the first floor, the up arrow comes on because we're at the bottom floor and now we're going back up. Now let's say we go up one floor, let's go up to floor two. So we're gonna go up to two, and since we're in the up direction, the up arrow is gonna turn on when we go up. So let's go up to four now. So we'll go to four. And again, we have the up arrow. And this time, let's say we go down to three. So if we go down to three, we're in the down direction now and the down arrow comes on. So now we're up to six. And go back to one. And here we are at one. So that is the indicator. It works flawlessly. I haven't noticed any issues in the code. I tried all kinds of possible scenarios with moving it up and down, and it works fine. So I'm very happy with the programming portion of this project. Now you may notice, <laughs> after handling this thing a while, it's gotten pretty dirty again. Fingerprints and all this kind of crap here. So we're gonna give it another clean up and then we need to add a way to turn it on and off. So we'll need to add a switch so we don't have to run it off the computer. We wanna run it off a nine volt battery. So back to the shop we go. All right guys, the project is totally done now. After bringing this back in, adding a switch and re-cleaning it all up, we can see it looks nice and clean again. So to turn this thing on, you just reach in the back and you slide the little switch on. And we can turn these lights off so we can see a little bit better. 
And like I showed you before, you can just tell it what floor you want it to go to, and it will move up and down accordingly. That's it for this project. Again, Justin, a huge thank you for this indicator. This was definitely a lot of fun to put together, a lot of fun to wire, and especially to program this thing. This was a bit of a more programming challenge more than anything. But I had a lot of fun doing it, and I'm pretty happy with the result. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and stick it into my room somewhere where it'll be on display for people to mess with and try out. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next project.